Hello there and uh, welcome to Our Spanish Dream. This is a little bit of a story about um, my wife and I's uh, trip to uh, Spain and the fact that with how much we sort of love Spain so much. And um, it's a little bit from a blog that we've done some time ago, but it's been really nice. We thought it'd be really nice to be able to put it on uh, YouTube. So we shall, we shall start. Okay. I suppose the size and style of towns in Torrevieja in the southern Costa Blanca and Calpe in the north Costa Blanca are similar. Both towns originally grew up around the salt industry. However, unlike Torrevieja, Calpe's lakes are no longer productive. Both towns are now developed way beyond their original boundaries. Both have developed as a tourist destination. Both have large expat expat populations from the northern European countries. I already knew Calpe well. Torrevieja was new to me. Calpe was much, has much taller buildings and backs the mountains. Torrevieja has more urbanisations and backs onto the salt lakes and uh, national park and fertile agricultural plain, vegetable basket of the Alicante region. What has struck me is that when driving along the twisty coast road from Marira to Calpe through the Benissa coastal area, there is no break in the building. The roads are lined with villas snaking up the hillside, winding cliff roads from Calpe to Altea has dramatic views, but still lined with villas creeping up the hills and the odd commercial outlet. And it was the same from Altea to Albert. I realised with sadness that there was nowhere I knew in the northern Costa Blanca where I could just walk along the beach without buildings around me unless I had my back to the cliff. A few places anywhere near the coast without villas dotting the landscape, their lights at night looking like thousands of bright fireflies frozen onto the hillside and the cliff tops. The building boom that had started in the 80s here, mainly individual villas with gardens set on the hillside, set on the outside of towns. The Northern Europeans, the Brits especially, had flocked to live in this picturesque sunshine to live the dream. In the process, the hills had be been carved up and changed beyond recognition. I am so glad that at last the town halls have finally started to restrict the development along the coast. That was left. What is left must be preserved. We drove past the Pink Lake Salt mountains piled next to it, waiting to be loaded into onto the conveyor belt that passed under the road and the buildings to to the beach, and then put and then out to the jetty to be loaded onto ships. Some of this salt ends up on the UK roads in winter. Tarhiaka is a long narrow town, so from the coast road. You are never very far from the sea, even though you, can, you can't you can see it most of the time. Salt has always been important to the town. It really, the only reason why it came to be. Having first been listed as a town in 1802, and the name after its watchtower, Torrey Tower, Vieja, mean old which was destroyed in a devastating earthquake earthquake in 1829. The lakes together with the Marmanor to the south and Santa Pola Salt Lakes to the north creates a unique microclimate. One of the World Health Organization's list as one of the healthiest place in the world, particularly good for those who suffer with joint or respiratory problems, combined with the warm average winter temperature higher than the Costa del Sol and North Costa Blanca of over 10 degrees, usually upper teens, low 20s in the sun. 
320 days of sunshine and frost being virtually unheard of. You cannot better the climate in Europe. The population of Torrevieja has quadrupled since 1990 and now stands at over 100,000, which calls a huge construction boom. It has one of the most diverse populations, half the Spanish, half are Spanish, around 11 to 12 percent are from English speaking countries and the rest are from around the world. The town has historical trading links with the Caribbean, which has led to a unique style of song called the Habaneras. The Habaneras festival has been running for over 40 years in the town every August. Like every other Spanish town, there are numerous festivals throughout the year. Leaving Torrevieja, we came to the one of the newest towns on the coast, Orihuela Costa. As we drove down the hill, the houses spread out before us. There were thousands. As I looked, I didn't feel that it was somewhere I could make home. It, it was so different to the Spain I knew and loved. Orihuela Costa is actually part of Orihuela City, some 20 kilometres away. In the 70s, there was little there except farmland, a relatively new hotel and a few fishermen's cottages on the seafront. Around two kilometres inland was the orig original Lathenia village where the detached single-storey villas and small gardens were divided into narrow streets or divided by narrow streets. The only one, one car wide, Orihuela City Hall realised the potential to develop the land and established a seafront town cashing in on an explosion of the nor northern European second home buyers. Unlike the villas in the north, in the north, outside of the towns with large gardens, the whole town was built on, on a more traditional Spanish basis. Low-rise apartments, townhouses with courtyards, and a few larger detached houses with small gardens. The vast majority were built in communities with shared gardens and pool. Not traditional, but pools are expected by foreign buyers. The town grew in somewhat higgledy-piggledy manner, giving an, 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 an air of not being planned at all. There are different areas rem reminding me, uh, remind me a little of how the UK new towns were, were made. Lots of towns within the town but just not organised. I learnt the names of the areas Lathenia, Cabo Roig, Playa Flamenca, Punta Prima, Los Altos, La Florida, the Hezo de Campamore, Villa Martin, Los Dolces, and the golf courses too, Villa Martin, Las Ramblas, Campamore, and since then the new, the new Las Calinas. They were open spaces including large natural areas along Playa Flamenca seafront. Sadly, some of this will almost certainly be developed and nothing and nothing except in De Heza de Campamore, over five storeys, most only these or less. And in, May, and in May, when we have made our first visit, it was bustling. 